um, reminder session code for this is M9, because we are the marketing track in here now. And I'd like to introduce you to Matt Hames from Colgate University, and he's going to try to talk us out of some Facebook pages. All right, before I, uh, before I get into that, um, I want to tell you a little bit about me. An uh, important thing to understand about me is that I grew up there. <laughs> that means that if you want to ask me about curling, you can. I do know it. I also know about hockey. Um, I know about cold. A long time ago, a long time ago, I was on my computer, and do you guys remember on our emails there used to be this thing called discussion groups? There used to be this thing on the left-hand side called discussion groups. Nobody clicked them except me. I clicked it, and inside there was alt.fan.tomrobbins. Now, I happen to be a big fan of Tom Robbins, the author, not Tim Robbins, the motivational speaker. Tom Robbins, the author. So I joined this discussion group really, really early social network where you sent email to the discussion group um, and to the list, and the list sent it to everybody who was subscribed. It was a horrible way to communicate, but we worked through it. And there was a girl on there who was also inside that group. Now, she lived here, which was a bit of a problem, but it wasn't that big of a problem because at the time I was living in Toronto and she was living here, this is Buffalo, New York. We got to talking we, uh, via email. We got to talking. Sent her, I sent her pros. She sent me back pros. And we ended up actually hooking up, getting married, and I moved to the US. So I like to think that a big part of my early social network career is my bona fides. And here they go, just to recap for everybody. Um, met a girl in an early social network, wooed her with my words, <laughs> and managed to move to the US and become a citizen. When I was in Toronto, I was a copywriter. When I moved to the US, I continued to be a copywriter. Clearly not a designer. <laughs> I am a copywriter. I can't design my way out of, uh, out of anything. I, I put words way too close together like that. I just like the way that looks, but everyone thinks it looks horribly. Um, but I was a copywriter, and I started, copywriting is the act of creating content. So I started creating content. Um, I did 30-second radio spots. I did print ads. I did, um, I did web back when, you know, I'd like to say back when the web was really horrible, but it continues to be a relatively <laughs> horrible place. For marketers, um, for some reason, we just think that we should just vomit up a brochure onto a website. Um, not at your university, and certainly not at my university, but it does happen. Um, so along the way, um, as I continue creating content, I created a couple of kids. <laughs> there they are. So, and, and then I got, at, um, as I was in an advertising agency, um, doing Facebook pages and doing social media for a bunch of different brands. And I was standing up in front of a bunch of people saying how great social media is, how great Twitter is, how great Facebook is. It was a couple of years ago. And there was a woman in there watching it. And she worked here at lovely Colgate University. And at the end of it, she walked up to me and said, we should talk. And we did. And we carried on talking. And I eventually found myself at Colgate University and I do a lot of the social media in Colgate. And it's, it's really fun. And when I got there, about a year and a half ago, I found myself in a place where I continually, and I'm not kidding when I say this, continually had to talk people out of Facebook. They would come to me and, said, and say, I want a Facebook page. And so I would have to spend the next 15 minutes explaining to them why they don't want a Facebook page. Along the way, I had some fires and sat and thought it all through. And I think it's important for you guys to understand here that I do truly like Facebook. I, I'm, I'm, if, if you were hoping that I was going to say to everybody here, or if you were hoping I was going to stand up here and say, Facebook is going out of business, we should all abandon chip, that's not the case. That's not what I'm trying to say. But I think if you understand what Facebook pages can do and what Facebook in general can do, then you can understand that you shouldn't necessarily just 
create a Facebook page for the sake of it. Now, again, there was a time when, when that was true. You could just create a Facebook page for the sake of it. And five years ago, um, this week actually, I turned this page on for the first time um, way back. It's Bojangles. Anybody here know what Bojangles is? Yeah, I did the Bojangles Facebook page. It was such a cool time for Facebook pages and for brands that I'm not kidding you when I say this, we would hit refresh and there'd be 200 more fans. And they called them fans then. It wasn't likers or whatever that is. They didn't, you didn't like it then. You became a fan. We'd hit refresh and it'd be like, that was a thousand. We would click it and we got to, we got the, after the day we turned it on, the first week we got to 100,000 fans in a week. Wow, this is a cool, powerful tool. Um, two years after this, so three years ago, this is a really, really well-known brand, right? Um, it, so in terms of a popularity contest, you just had to be there and away you went. Two years ago, it took two years from this moment of, I gotta just turn it on and you get tons of fans and they'll just come and they'll, we had another client, another really, really well-known client, it took them two years to turn the thing on. So we turned it on for Fisher Price. We got, um, we got like, Fisher Price gets a million hits to their website a day or something stupid like that. Like it's just an insane amount of traffic. We turned it on, we got to 4,000 fans in no time, and then we just flatlined. We're like, wow, that's weird. So the, the thing was is there was a moment in time where you could do this without even trying, and you got fans. And that moment, the window closed really, really fast. What happened is, we all kind of remember it. Um, we, we liked people. You liked your grade nine locker partner. You liked, your, um, you liked the soda drink that you liked. You liked your university. You liked, there was a whole bunch of things to like. And, and we just kind of said, wait a second, do I really like that? Do I really want all that? Do I, like, at the beginning we just dived into Facebook and said, yes, I like that, I like you, I like this. And, and then we started to be much more cautious about what we wanted to like. So knowing all that, um, that's kind of like the, a little bit of the background of where I come from. So I stand there in front of people and they come up to me and say this. And, and if you're, raise your hand if you're in the communications department or dealing communications, right. So you may or may not get this as well. You may or may not get this. Um, this may sound familiar. The, um, um, let's say a bunch of really important people at your school go on a tour of Facebook and then they come back and then they say, everybody should have a Facebook page. And you're standing there going, wait, no, I'm not sure that's right. I don't, I, yeah, okay. And so you don't, really don't know what to say because um, it is just a tactic, right? It's a Facebook page as a tactic. And before you should actually do a tactic, you should have a strategy. We don't do that in social media. We start Twitter feeds. Hey, let's have a Twitter feed. We should go on Pinterest. Maybe we should try Tumblr. Um, we just kind of like dive into these things. And that's kind of cool. It, it, there are certain things where you can back in strategies and you can back in a kind of a purpose. But here we are on, on, what, on, on, on Facebook pages, which are old, an older kind of a social media tactic. There are certain things they can do and there are certain things they can't do. And we're still in a place where people are just saying, I want a Facebook page. Now, you should understand when I say all this stuff that um, at Colgate University, there are Facebook pages outside of just the, name, the number one brand page. I'm fighting like crazy to shut them down. You can't always do that because it is really easy to start these things. Really easy. You just have to press a button and away you go. Um, but if, but um, if you can make an argument, you can talk people out of it. Case in point, we have a bunch of people who want to do this thing called Colgate Reads at Colgate. And, and, and really what it is is that everyone is going to read a short story in the fall. And this is our president over there on the left and the two faculty who are, who are running the whole thing. 
they're going to do, it's going to be an online thing where they're all going to read the same story and, and then the, the author of the story is going to come and speak and you can watch them on live stream in person, you can have dinner with them. There's a whole bunch of things you can do. And they said, we want to start a Facebook page. And I said, no. No, you don't. And you're not going to. And they said, why? And I said, you know, I have 13 reasons. Because if you know anything about Colgate, um, we like the number 13. I have 13 reasons why you shouldn't start a Facebook page. And I'm going to get to those in a second. But um, I said to them, a better thing to do is this and this and this and this. And they said, OK. I, I agree. I'll agree with that. And I got them, and I got them to stop. Um, we currently have a, a Facebook page for our admissions at Colgate. It was there before I got there. Don't blame me. Um, I have finally convinced, took me a year and a half, I finally convinced the people we're going to shut it down this week. I feel so good about that. And I'm going to again talk through this with you, all the 13 reasons why. Um, I just want to recap, and I like showing people, I like showing off my kids, as you, as you may or may not. There's good, really good in a Facebook page. There are good, but there's also bad. So in that list of 13, um, I'm going to go through them. But before I do, I think it's important for, for us, for us as um, higher education communicators, to think about the student path. Now, this is not a, um, when back in, in a previous life when I worked in an advertising agency, we used to call this the path to purchase. We don't like calling it the path to purchase in, um, in higher ed, so I like to just call it the student path. And the student path just basically means that at some point, Somebody's in high school, and they're thinking about college. Then they're in college. And when they're done college, they're a grad. That's a student path, right? That's a path for no matter what your school is, um, we all have that. We all have that student path. We have the high school student, the current student, and the, um, the alum. And typically, we think about Facebook pages for these different, different parts of the path. Now, I'm going to tell you why I think that's wrong, again, in 13, for 13 reasons. But first, I want to think about, I want you to also think about this. As we think about Facebook pages and starting a new one and blah, 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 you can also think about, as a student in high school, we can see all this stuff, too. And we're, we've been hearing today a lot. Um, this morning, we heard a lot about uh, mobile. and your mobile web, your, your website better, better do a much better job of being mobile. Um, ours is a responsive design site. So what you see on your desktop, you see a different version of it on colgate.edu on your phone and a different version of it on your tablet. Um, but it is, important, it is important to understand that as a high school student, all these places are there for people. Um, and as a college student, they're there. And as an alum, they're there. So the, the, first thing, the first thing to think of, and it's not even part of the 13, is if there's a website for the thing, a website for the thing, there should be only one Facebook page for the thing. You don't have two YouTube pages for the thing. You don't have two Pinterest accounts for the thing. And if the thing is the school, then and again, if you have different schools within your university, we don't. We just have the one school. So we just have the one site. With one site, one YouTube channel, one Twitter feed, one Facebook page. It's really, when you think about it, it does, make kind, it does kind of make sense. And yet, we jump around and make a ton of them. So before I go into the 13, I do want to tell you a little bit about our social media numbers. I pulled some numbers from a year ago. Just, just to let you know the kinds of things that, that I throw past people when they're saying, um, I want to start a Facebook page. I say, well, we have a whole bunch of people who are visiting our blog. We have a whole bunch of people who view our YouTube channel. We have a whole bunch of people who check in at Foursquare. A bunch of people who follow us on Twitter. A bunch of people in a Google Plus circle that we're still trying to figure out. Um, <laughs> a bunch of people on Pinterest, which we're still trying to figure out. And Things are going up. So that was a year ago, and our numbers are, are a lot bigger there. 
But those are kind of like our, our engagement numbers. And then for that same time, we had that. And that was on just our, our big Facebook page. That was for a whole year. And we're thinking, and so I, I said to people, I want to increase that number by a lot, because I don't like that number. I want to increase it a lot. But you're not helping. They said, how come? I said, because you're, you're splintering people. They're not in one place. If you want me to increase this number, I need to have the people so that they can comment. They said, OK. So things are changing a little bit. We're getting more and more people reached. We're getting more and more people talking about it. We're engaging more and more people. And this is, this now is our page. And this, was, this is a thing at, at Colgate called Torchlight. Um, at, when you, at the beginning of Colgate, when you come there as a, as a first year, you take a lighted torch and you walk up the hill. Um, on commencement weekend, you take a lighted torch and you walk down the hill. On reunions, everybody gets a torch and walks around the place. It's kind of cool. <laughs> it's fun. It's really fun. Uh, yeah. No, it's great. So. Um, no, it really is. A, it's a sight to see, and the pictures are beautiful. Uh, so here they are. She came and spoke at Colgate. She is the COO of Facebook, Sheryl Sandberg. Here are the 13 ways that I think you can make um, Facebook work. And the number one reason, and I think I've killed this. I really do think I killed, I've killed this point, so I'm not going to stay long. But it's the uh, one page to rule them all theory. If you have one page, you will you will have more success because you won't be splintered. So that's not, you know, if you were to leave it there, they'd be like, no, nah, but I want to have another page. So I got to give you some more. Overload. I don't, I think we need, to, we need to think about the student that comes to our school and what we want them to do. If there's, a, if there's an admissions page and there's a, and there's a, a university page, and there's an athletics page, and there's a department page, and, and there's a theater page. You're going to say, like, your first year student meme is going to be, what do you want me to do? What is it that you want me to do? And if you think about that student path from here to here to here, if you're not clear with them what you want them to do, you're just going to have to work to get them to, to get them from the various pages. But at the very beginning, they're going to say, what, what do you want me to like and why? And if, again, having more pages, you're just not going to be able to communicate that simply. If you have one page, you can say, like this one. And you don't even have to try to figure it out. Not as hard, anyway. The number three one is the, the crazy algorithms. If, if there are 11,000 fans on your page, your post goes to that many. Or if you're, really, if you're really good, it goes to that many. But it still only goes to, at best, 40%. Unless, of course, you pay, which you can do. You can pay Facebook. Now, if you have unlimited budget, don't worry about it. Start as many Facebook pages as you want. Pay to boost the post. Pay to get more people to see it. Pay to get the right people to see it. You can still do that. But as a, as a as a general rule, we create the content and 40%, at best 40%, usually around 20%, see your content. So you're working hard to create this content and you get only that amount of people to see it, at best. It's based on this crazy algorithm that they won't talk, that, that they're not really sure of, but it's kind of a quality score and they don't, Facebook doesn't really publish it other than this. I have no idea what that, what that means. None whatsoever. I think what it really means is this. <laughs> That's what it means. It means, like we've talked about it, um, create content that people care about, create content. That is, that is easier said than done. But it's really hard if you have to create content on this page, then you have to create content on this page, then you have to create content on this page. It's hard enough to create content that people are going to engage with. If you have to do it on a bunch of different pages, it's even harder. So number four, photography. We have the good photographer. 
We do. There's, there's a, a school photographer, and, or, or there isn't, or you, have, you hire a photographer. We're lucky enough to have on staff a guy who takes pictures like this, and you just look at them and go, wow, those are awesome. They're really awesome photographs. This, this happened. This happened on a, on, a, on a Colgate University Facebook page, a department website, a department Facebook page. This picture actually was taken and posted. This picture could be posted on Facebook. This picture was posted on a department page. It's just from a phone. It's a crowd of people. They're enjoying something. I don't <laughs> They're in a room somewhere. It's certainly on campus. I can identify it because I've, I've been there. You can identify it. If you were standing in that room and saw that picture, you might be able to identify it. This, this happens, though. What happens is that um, this thing here, the don't have crappy copy, also includes don't have crappy pictures, don't have crappy content. But the act of starting a pa Facebook page is not the act of adding content to it. It's just the act of starting it. They start it, then they add content for a little while, and then they call you up and say, what can we put on here? How come we only have 120 fans? How come, how come this? And so you want to get to them before. Reach. Um, I've talked a little bit about silos. I've talked a little bit about the notion of silos, but the content within a silo, the content within a silo. We have typical things that happen throughout our academic year. You all have the same thing. We, students come and visit. Students are admitted. Students are admitted ED. There's a reunion that happens every year. There's a last day of classes. There's exams. These are things that happen throughout the year that you can plot on a calendar and you know that they're going to happen every single year. Well, the thing is, if you leave that content on just an admissions Facebook page, if you leave like ED is going out now on just an admissions Facebook page, you miss the opportunity to get alums talking about it who say, hey, I, 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 signed, I applied ED, greatest decision of my life, love my four years there, that's an engagement. But if you keep your Facebook pages in silos and you don't think about the student path, then you're, you're trying to get engagement about ED with just people who care about admissions when you're missing the chance to talk to current students and to talk to alums and increase your, your um, engagement score, increase your reach, get people talking, and who knows, you might even increase your yield. You never know. If you have alums coming in there saying, uh, it was great, best decision I've ever done. Now, of course, that's not going to apply for ED, but it is going to apply for a regular decision. So you may or may not increase that. When you start a Facebook page, you essentially start a room. When you, when you hit create, you've created a room with zero people in it. You're in it, so you're standing in there by yourself going, I'm in this room by myself. It's cool. <laughs> Having fun in here. It's great. Zero people. Zero people are inside of your room when you start it. Do you really want or believe that at this point in Facebook's cycle, in Facebook pages cycle, you're going to start a page that people are going to run to? That's the question I ask people. They're like, yes. OK, let's move on to number seven. Uh, because that's what, if you were to just give me the content and I post it on Facebook, that's the size of the room that we're talking about. Now I know it only goes to 40% or 30% of those people, but it's a bigger room than that. It has more people in it. Number seven is the blank page. Now, I was in a session earlier today where, where a really smart guy said, never start you're, when you're trying to think, never start with a blank page. Well, you know what? If you have to create content on a consistent basis, unless you have tricks to not start with a blank page, you're starting with a blank page. At some point, you're starting with nothing. You have to create a bunch of different content. Your content, if you're in the alumni office, 
can be all admission stuff. It can be the admissions dates. It can be exam week. It can be finals week. It can be the event that always happens that year. It can be football games. It can be tailgating. It can be all that kind of stuff. You can work together and create content. It's hard to create content. It's really hard to create content if you're assigned to it and you're assigned to that small uh, niche or niche. I forget. Niche is Canadian niche. If you're stuck in your little niche or your niche, depending if you're Canadian or not, if you're stuck in that little thing, and all you can do is create content around that little thing, it's going to be much harder. If you can create content around your entire school, it's going to be much easier. You can work together. You can co-create content instead of, this is my little fiefdom, this is my fiefdom, this is my fiefdom. You work together, the blank page goes away a lot quicker. Back to that whole notion of there's, there's um, nobody on the page. When you start a page, the first goal is to get people on the page, get people into that room. So you have to actually do marketing. Now, we've been talking about, um, about a lot of analytics and website visits and, and, and that kind of stuff. Uh, a website is not responsible for the hit or the page view it gets first, right? A website is not responsible for the hit or the page view that it gets first. Other marketing, like somebody either types in your school into Google and they find your, that's, that, the website didn't get that hit. Other marketing did because they heard about your school. Or you're, you're published somewhere in the New York Times and they say, oh, I want to go look at that school. That's, so other marketing gets the first hit. The website is responsible for the second hit or time on site, et cetera. A Facebook page, has a hard time getting a fan with content. It was, again, easier five years ago when I started the Bojangles page. I just turn it on, hit refresh, boom, fans. Two years later, turn it on, hit refresh, no fans. Now, turn it on, hit refresh, 120. We max out at around 120 fans. It's because it's hard. And you have to invest time and effort and money into the marketing of the page when there's already a page with a bunch of people in it. You don't have to do the marketing or the effort. So again, when that person comes to you and says, I want to start a page, or when you go to them and say, I want to shut down your page. Why? Well, here's the reason. We got a lot of people over here waiting for content. You're going to have to spend money on, on Facebook ads or whatever to drive people to your page when really they're over here. So why do you have to do that? Incidentally, all the pictures in here are were taken by my wife. This, these, are, these are cupcakes, um, little animal cupcakes that she made. So like this is a little gummy and those are, yeah. I just love it. It has nothing to do with marketing. I just love the picture. <laughs> I confess. I just love it. So uh, this, was, this was, again, my wife took this picture. This is, we missed the boat. That's really what it comes down to. There was a moment where we could have done this really easily um, if the Colgate University Facebook page was started at the time where people were just fanning like crazy, and they were fanning at that time. Uh, it would be so much easier now. Now we're chasing a little bit. Um, we're working hard on chasing it. If you st on your pages, you're probably working just as hard at chasing the alums. You're working just as hard at chasing the people. Um, the important thing to understand here is it was easier before. And now with this many pages out there, maybe even more than that, it's the staggering ease at, with, at which we can create Facebook pages means that there's a massive amount of really bad ones. And so, I, I feel like, like as, a, as a guy who did, who did websites for the first time when websites were kind of coming up and I was working in an advertising agency and the first website I ever did was for a company called Petro Canada, which is a gas station in Canada. Why on earth would a gas station need a website? I don't know. Still don't know. But they paid, a, they paid the advertising agency a ton of money to put up a picture and a bunch of words saying how great of a gas station they were. Um, 
we did the first web really, really badly as marketers. We did it horribly. We just stuck online brochures up there. It was my hope and my dream and, and that we do the second web a little better, but the problem is the second web is easier to do. It's easier to, like, we couldn't have created the Petro-Canada website all those years ago. You needed programmer dudes, and, like, I couldn't just do it. The problem with the second web is it's really easy to do this stuff. The ease at which people can create Facebook pages means that they're doing them. And instead of thinking it through, instead of thinking, what is it that I really want to do, they're saying, press the button, and I got a page. And so we have 15 million or so, and that's just 50 million um, pages on 8 million downloads of Page Manager. So these, like, that might not even be a real number. It might be 30 million. It could be a lot, I'm telling you. Um, I, I, I was responsible for trying to talk really like big brands. There was a brand that makes light switches in, in my previous life. They make light switches. They want a Facebook page. It's like, dudes, nobody cares. Nobody knows who their light switch brand is. Nobody. <laughs> it's a light switch. I get that you love your light switch. I get that. And it's an awesome light switch. But it's a light switch. Don't fall in love with your light switch. Because not everybody else is going to love it. They said, OK, went away, made the page. And then a year later said, how come we only have 120 fans? It's like, uh, uh, so if you have silos, and I've, talk, I've touched on this a little bit. If you have silos, right, because the marketing is hard and because you have to continually do effort, if you have a Facebook page for admissions, a Facebook page for current students, and then a Facebook page for alums, you have to continually be thinking about how to cycle them through. Stop liking this one, go to this one. On your admissions page, do you say, like, do you, do you write that? Um, I asked the people who do the admissions page, I said, are you going to say, the cycle's over, unlike us, a whole bunch of new people come in, like, are we going to say that? No. How come? We're repeating ourselves to these people, but we really want to get the ones who were, who were thinking about coming to the school and said yes to come to the school to the one that, to the, to this one, and then when they become alums, we want to get them to this one. And so how do you do that? How do you do that easily? Search me. I mean, I don't, I don't think there's an easy way to do that. I don't think there's an easy way to transition them. But if you don't have to transition them, you don't have to think about it. If you only have one page, you don't have to think about it. They're not going to make ads in any way, shape, or form with their 120 fans. If it's a department page, if it's a whatever, they're not going to make ads. We can do ads. Um, I saw, I have seen incredible success with reunion ads. Just, just not saying, coming to a reunion, um, or no call to action or anything like that. Just a picture of last year's reunion with reunion 2013. That was the only thing. And you pay for the click, and I think I got 12 clicks, so I paid uh, I think it was a buck eighty a click. I got six hundred thousand impressions though. Six hundred thousand impressions amongst a population of about six thousand people. Got six hundred thousand impressions. Now, raise your hand if you even know where ads are on Facebook. Probably don't, and that's fine, right? I don't look at ads on Facebook. I'm I'm not again saying that they're going to work, but you put your you put yourself inside of the head of an alum who's on Facebook and looking. Occasionally, that right-hand side, just like, it's on. Oh, no. Look at the pictures of the kids. Back to, back to my buddy. We're going, out, we're going out tonight, whatever. It's over there, but it's over there. It's over 600,000 impressions on 6,000 people. It was there. It was in their face. And it wasn't like, it was just a picture that said Reunion 2013. Um, did it last year, too. This year, Reunion was up 18%. Last year, reunion was up, eight, was up 17% over the year before. Um, we are continually getting up. Now, that could also be that the students who are, who are five years out now had Facebook, 
when they were in college. So they kind of stay connected, and, but on Facebook, and they want to actually meet IRL. That's what the kids are calling in real life these days. So they want to actually meet IRL, and so they come. Could be that. Could also be the ads. Don't know. But I do know this, that a department starts a page and gets their 120 fans. They are not even going to think about this. None of this. They're not going to even consider it. They're not going to consider the notion that they can use this tool for advertising in any way. You are. You should have the people. Facebook is a horrible, horrible, horrible content management system. It does a lot of things really well. It connects you to your grade nine locker partner really well. It, it connects you to your friends' lives really well. It connects you to pictures of my kids, if you're a, friend of, if you're a fan of mine. We, if we were friends on Facebook, you'd be inundated with pictures of my kids. They're the most documented kids in the world, except for your kids, who are probably just as documented. Um, but what it doesn't do well, it doesn't do search well. Try searching within Facebook, it's horrible. It doesn't search, it doesn't index in Google well. It doesn't, it doesn't come out of Facebook very well. It doesn't come from Facebook to your website very well. It, you can do it, you can hack that around, but it doesn't do it well. What it does well is connect people to people within a network. It does not come to your department page well. It, doesn't, it just doesn't really come out of it well. So as a content management system, it's horrible. The other thing that I say continually and if you, if you think of nothing else, is I don't think of Facebook page, .edu, YouTube channel as different. I just think of them as all pages, Colgate University pages. I'm continually trying to think of how they can work together and what they can do. What, they, what this one can do for this one and vice versa. They're all part of an experience that a student is going to have, either a prospective student, current student, or an alum. They're all part of a page. To them, they're just pages. To us, they might have distinctions where this is a .edu, and this is a .org if you have them, and this is a Facebook page, and this is a YouTube channel, and this is a Flickr site. To them, it's just all Colgate content. So I'm constantly thinking about how to pull that content to this place. If the journey of a student, of a current student, starts with a Facebook page, goes to the website, then goes to Flickr because we have great pictures, then goes to YouTube to see a thing, to see a video of people answering a question, then goes back to the website, that's a journey. And I'm okay with that complete journey. I'd love there to be a thing that can connect that journey, doesn't exist yet, but we're going to start thinking about it that way. So again, if you're, if you're creating content, if people are creating content and, and they come to you, right? When they come to you and say, I would like to start a Facebook page, you know what they're really saying? I want to create content. That's what they're really saying to you. They're saying, I have content. I have stuff that I want to share. Whether it's pictures in, in fuzzy hallways from stairs or events, they want to share content. So you reframe the question when they say, I want to create a Facebook page. You say, oh, you want to create content. That'd be awesome because you know what? You don't want to create it in a place with no fans, with zero people. I mean, you don't want to walk into an empty room and go, hey, you should come to our event. That would be a waste of your time, everybody's time. So don't do that. You're going to also be stuck with a bad quality store when you start. You're going to be stuck with no engagements. And you don't want that, right? You want to actually, you want your content to go in front of people. Like, let's say we magically did get people right into that room. You want it to go to all those people, right? Yeah, yeah, I do. Okay. Um, I really wish you had to come in here five years ago, but you know we can't really do anything like that. Um, we're not trying to put this content into its little niche. We're not trying to keep it inside of that. We're trying to put this content into the overall perspective of a student journey. Right? Do you agree with that? Yeah, okay. Move on. What part of that process are you? What part are you? Are you part of the alumni process? Are you part of the current events, current students process? 
Where do you fit into that process? And how can we best fit your content into that process? Because Facebook page over here will not be part of that process. So it will, it will not. So getting engagement is really, really, really hard. Now I say that over and over because part of my job is to do it. And if I just keep telling them that it's really hard, they think that I'm maybe good at my job. So I don't know. But I say it's really hard. It's easy if you have pictures of your kids and they're really cute and you post that on your Facebook page and you get like 27 likes and then the person goes, I can get them on my page. Why can't I just go to this page and get it? Well, it's different. It's a lot harder. So the final thing is, is we have access to a better photographer and we want to be able to use his pictures um, as much as possible. Here's, here's one thing that I recently learned. I don't know if you guys do this, but it's, it's one of the tips and tricks you should do is if you can take a ton of pictures of an event and just post them on Facebook, your students and alums will tag themselves in those pictures because tagging is really easy. And tagging is an engagement and it increases your engagement score. It increases your quality score. And you don't, so you don't have to worry as much as who's in this picture and putting like a little description, just post the picture. They'll put the description and tag it for you. And it's an, in, it's an automatic engagement. The better the picture, the more, you're, the more tagging you're going to get. So um, more pictures, not less. And just post for um, reunion, just this past reunion, I put 256 photos on the Koya University Facebook page. 156. I know that because I counted them. And they're almost all tagged now. And they continue to get tagged. They just continue to have a life of their own. So do that by all means. And make sure you get a good photographer because it does matter. The picture that you're going to take with your phone will not be as good as the picture that a photographer takes with their camera. Um, so there are better ways to manage content. And I think that an important thing is to talk about them. So there are blogs that you could, you could take a blog and pull it. You could take a blog and pull it right to a department page as a headline. You can, again, you can create content right inside of YouTube. You can create content. The question that you want to ask back to the person that says to you, we want to start a Facebook page, or we manage a Facebook page that has 120 fans and we would like to increase the amount of people who are on it. Or, we don't think our Facebook page is working. You hear that one too. We don't think it's quite working. Well, what was your goal? I don't know. You sort of need a goal to figure out whether or not something's working. And if your goal was, it was really easy, so I just turned it on, it's not a goal. That's really just a statement. It's not even marketing. You're not even doing proper marketing now. All you're doing is pressing buttons. So what you want to do is take that step back with them with those people who want to create content. The amazing and incre incredible thing that, that is happening right now, and it's, it's both scary and awesome at the same time, is that the ease with which anybody at your university can create content is both awesome and scary. So it's awesome because a lot of people creating content, telling you about the great things that they're doing, telling you about the paper that they just published or the, or the research that they're working on, awesome. Scary, because they might just go do it themselves in their own little corner of the world, be it a Facebook page, their blog, their Tumblr, their whatever. So you, as much as possible, say to them, I want to work with you. I don't want to create the content for you. I still want you to create the content, but let's do it in a smarter, better, more meaningful way that thinks about, the, um, thinks about the, uh, the student path, but also thinks about how the content can work together and just make for a better experience for everybody. So um, I, that's what I say to them. I want it. I want your content. I want you to create content. I'll go, I'll go to, into any department and say, listen, I can, you just tell me what it is that you have. What are you comfortable doing? Are you comfortable talking? Are you comfortable writing? Are you comfortable taking pictures? Are you comfortable doing this? We'll figure it out. What content do you have and what, how are you com comfortable making it? Because there's so much good stuff. There's so much good stuff being created at our schools 
There's so much good stuff being created by our, our faculty, our students, our administrators. They're going on the road. They're, do, they're creating all this wonderful content. What we have to figure out, not let's do this tactic. What we have to figure out is how do we take that content and make it and put it in a more meaningful place, both either on our website, on a blog, or whatever. So I've kind of done a lot of yakking, and there's about six minutes left. Um, if anybody has any questions or disagrees wholeheartedly, I'm happy to uh, listen. Yes? I'm s the question is, um, the question was, are you saying yes to an alumni Facebook or no to an alumni Facebook? I'm saying no, definitive no. I think that what is better to have your school Facebook page and they just graduate to being alums. Then your Facebook page, if you can get them in there as students, it is, the alumni number just ticks up every year upon graduation. Oh, look, we just got 600 new alums. It's awesome. Like, it'll just continually tick up. So what I'm saying is no to an alum. And part of the reason is think about, think about um, uh, like for us, for reunion or for events, if we have alumni events, they're going to come back on campus and students are invited to them. So we'd like the students to be seeing that as well. We'd like people who are thinking about coming to Colgate, seeing the content that our alums are creating. If, if we're posting on our, on our Facebook page, look at our alum just wrote a paper about, the, about working at the uh, large Haldron, I don't even know what it's called, that thing in Switzerland, the big circle in Switzerland. We had an alum who, who wrote about that, right? So we posted that on Facebook. That's awesome content for a prospective student. It would be stuck in an alumni only page that just alumni are, are looking at, whereas this is content that's like, oh, that is, outcomes are what prospective students want to see. Uh, yes? much less control over that. Um, what, what our answer to that is, is we are trying to start class year groups, Facebook groups per class year. And when a really, really cool and exciting thing is, is that um, we have an almost full class of 2015, 2016, 2017 Facebook group. We're trying to back our way into Facebook groups for the other years. Our, Surprisingly, our 83 group is the most vibrant. Now it's a three, and this is a three, so they were coming for a reunion. So um, threes and eights tend to do better this year. Next year, it'll be fours and sevens. So um, that's always something to think about as well. Go after, if you, if you decide, you have to talk them out of a thing into a thing. And so if they want to do that page, you can say, here's all the reasons why it's a pretty, pretty bad idea. Here's why a Facebook group could work. And our strategy is to go after, like we are, I, we've identified the fours and the sevens for next year, and we want to get that group going because um, they're going to be caring. Like they're at least going to be thinking about coming. So, yes? So, if I understand all this stuff, and thank you so much for being here today. Oh, thank you. So, the metaphor, like we are here in these different rooms, but we come together in a big president hall. Yeah. Or lunch and dinner, right? Yeah. So you would say we should all stay in the big president's hall and talk there, right? This is what you say? Yeah, um, metaphorically, yes. Yeah. Yeah. But would we have a good conversation like all of us? I think I, that's a good question. Um, I think that you would at least have a better chance at having a more meaningful conversation there than in the other ones. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't use topics to get people to go off on a topic. And so you can use topics to get people talking about those various things. More people are going to care about ED who care about early decision. More people are going to care about reunion from different subsects. But it doesn't mean you can't have the same conversation in the same room. Yes? Right. <laughs>
alumni, you have this, you've designated them certain times and days, so people are getting used to the content that's relevant to them coming back on every Tuesday for alumni, or that type of thing. And then second, do invite everyone to post their events on your Facebook, like event staff, or have you developed different apps where people can go and find information and then just take that from there? Okay, so Sorry. two questions. The first question is, um, do we time events based on the kind of people who are, uh, time the content based on the kind of people who are listening? The second question is, do events sync with our, with our events? The first question is, um, not really well yet. We're still continuing to make the argument. Um, I, I have a meeting each week with uh, somebody in alumni affairs and somebody in admissions. We talk about it. We're putting together a big calendar. First time ever, and I would urge you all to do that too. Every school has the same thing. You have, you have a bunch of dates that happen in and around the same time. Stick them on a big, huge calendar. Get together with a bunch of people from alumni affairs and a bunch of people from admissions and say, what are the events that people are going to care about the most? You can schedule events inside of Facebook pages now six months out. So you can schedule a post six months out. If you know six months from now when the first day of classes are, and you do, <laughs> you could post that today. You could schedule that today. So think about that kind of thing. And instead of thinking like coming in on a Monday morning going, oh, I got to do posts. Um, you know, this is a whole another 40-minute um, conversation. But um, think about the kinds of things that you can put in there that are scheduled. And schedule. Schedule as much as you can. You got six months, so schedule. Second question, do events sync? Um, not well yet. We have, our, especially our alumni events, we have alumni groups and they just create events. What, what we're trying to teach them is that if they tag Colgate University in their posts, however it is, we will be able to share it. We will be able to promote it. Again, part of the argument is if you tell us what you're up to, we can promote it in our big huge room. If there's only one us, they understand where to go to. If there's more than one us, they don't. Who, us, who? Who should I go to? Should it? So one us, it's, that's the one ring to rule them all theory. It, it really does play out. Um, and more and more alums, when they create events on Facebook, are CCing Colgate University, and we can just share it. Great questions. Yeah. So the question is, how do you, because you have one page that rules all, how do you get, um, how, do you, how do you not inundate people with posts? So let's say there's a happy hour in New York City on Saturday night. Facebook allows you to post to just um, Colgate University or, or grads, graduates, and you assume that if they're graduates of college, it's of your college, because they like your page, and in New York City. So the more you do that for that kind of thing, um, for bigger alumni events, we will post them on the page just to let people know there's a ton of events out there. But for an event like, um, like just a, um, you know, uh, there's, a, there's a Washington Nationals baseball game happening on Monday night. That's just going to the DC area people. So we're, we're thinking about there, are con there is content that is just for current students, events that are happening on campus. We post those to just current students. And again, they, and you just click that little thing that says educational status in school. If they like your page, chances are they are your student. So we try to do that as much as possible. Um, the other thing is, is uh, we do posts like that more than we do posts that go to everybody. When we do posts that go to everybody, they're typically pictures or a recap of events. So just because we have one page and we have that whole, whole room, we have the presence all filled with people, doesn't mean everything we say goes to every single one of those people. But we have the chance to. And, it's, and it's, we have the chance to connect those dots. You're welcome. Does any rumbling? Yeah, OK. Who has a question? No questions? Oh.
Yeah. Yeah. Right, right, right. So I think the rule of thumb might be thinking about it in terms of websites. If there's a website for the school and like the university as a whole, like Penn State would have a website as a whole, but then how do you do the college pages? Like think about that, think about that that you want to do. If the if there's a college page that's totally separate and it looks separate, then by all means do it. Another rule of thumb to think about is how many YouTube channels do you have? Do you have one for every college? Do you have one for every department? Like, for some reason, we didn't decide to turn on a YouTube channel for everybody. But we decided to turn on a Facebook page for everybody. I don't get that. But I do understand that, that there are people who are going to really guard their college page. And so the argument doesn't work across the board at a, at a really big school. It works better because I can just go into their office and say, cut it out. But you probably don't have that ability. Pushing people, though, into the idea of, like, if you say to them, how come, we don't have a, how come you don't have a separate YouTube channel, but you have a separate Facebook page, is a way to kind of get them thinking, you don't have a separate website. It still looks like Penn State. You know, what are you trying to accomplish? And wouldn't it be better if we just had them all right here? Because then we'd have a million people in one place instead of, your 100,000 there or your 10,000 or whatever, we have them all here. And there are great products that you can buy that flow the content into it if you have a huge page like that. Um, I, I'll, I'll, I'll explain it with Fisher Price. In, in order for Fisher Price to do the Facebook page that they did, they needed to have human resources, customer service, and marketing in the same room. They had never been in the same room before, ever. Ever in the history of their company had, they, had those three senior vice presidents been in a room together talking. They'd been in a, like other meetings, and, but they, they were there. Because the questions that they were going to get were, can I work there? My toy's broken. I love my toy. That was essentially what they were going to get. They made the case that those people would handle those sections of the website separately, but they would talk once a week. I think that same argument could be made for a Penn State. I really, duly, I truly believe that you, one would be better. It would be way better. It would, you'd be able to do way more things. You could still advertise, or you could still target your message right down to likes and interests. You could still get the, the uniqueness of a college. You can still get the voice of a college inside of it. You could even post and say, this is from the college, of this particular college. It's so 500 words or something like that in a Facebook post. So you could say, this is coming from so-and-so college. So I just, I, again, I don't pretend to tell you that it's going to be easy or that it's even 100% right. But I think it sounds right. OK. Thank you.